Okay, uh, and in the last part of the lecture, we're going to see about, uh, well, how the gradient can be applied to find uh, the minimum or the maximum rate of change among all possible directions at a given point. All right, uh, now, uh, so here is the, the question that, that we're going to look at. So if we have some, some function of two variables uh, and and a certain point, um, that, that we take the, that we measure the value of the function at. And we are looking at all possible directions, right? So if this is like on the plane x, y, x, y, right? So th th this is our point uh, p, right? So at each point of the plane, we can compute the function's value. Now, at a given point, so there are like a lot of different directions, so in all possible directions. In which direction uh, does the function grow most rapidly? In which direction does the function decrease most rapidly? So that's the question here. Well, uh, in order to answer the, this question, we are going to look again at uh, the expression for the uh, directional derivative in the direction of a unit vector u. So here, the vector u is supposed to be a unit vector. So the norm u is, is 1. And we know that the directional derivative is the uh, dot product of the gradient vector and this unit vector. Well, in order to answer the initial question, we need to recall some fact from um, secondary school. Right? So you, I hope you still remember that the dot product of two vectors is the product of their norms times the cosine of the angle between them. Right? So, and in in our case, so this is the directional derivative, right? So this is the dot product of the gradient vector and the uh, direction vector, the vector u. But u is supposed to be uh, a unit vector, right? so its norm is one. So this is one, so which essentially means we, we can just 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 erase it. So the product with one is 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 um, it's just the same thing, right? So we want to find the minimum and the maximum of this expression. But here, nebula f of p is, is just given, right? So it's, it's fixed. So it does not depend on the direction, right? So the question is, for which value of the angle between the gradient vector and uh, the vector u is this as large as possible or as small as possible? Right? So for which angle is it maximized and minimized? And we know that, I mean, since, since it just depends on the angle, and we know that cosine of any angle is between 1 and 1. Basically, you know, if cosine is 1, then we have the maximum. If cosine is negative 1, we have the minimum, right? So the uh, largest possible directional derivative is achieved when uh, the cosine of the angle between the direction and the gradient factor is 1. And the smallest is when it is negative 1. But how is it possible that cosine of theta is 1? Well, basically, if cosine of theta is 1, essentially, it means that theta itself is 0, right? How is it possible that cosine of theta is negative 1? If cosine of theta is negative 1, it means that theta is pi or in, in degrees is 180 degrees, right? So in other words, what we see here is that... Um, to maximize the um, directional derivative, we need to go in the direction of the gradient vector. To minimize it, we need to go in the opposite direction. And we also know that if, you know, what is the largest possible rate of change? So the largest possible rate of change occurs when cosine of theta is one. But if cosine of theta is one, then the rate of change itself is going to be the norm of the gradient vector. So what we see is that the maximum rate of change among all possible directional derivatives is just the norm of nebula f of p. And of course, by the same logic, the smallest possible, so the minimum is going to be minus the norm of nebula f of p. And that's basically uh, what we see here, right? So... Um, so the maximum uh, value of the directional derivative occurs when 
we take the directional derivative in the same direction as the uh, gradient vector and that value equals to the norm of the gradient vector and the minimum occurs when we take the opposite uh, value and in that case the minimum is minus the norm of the gradient vector all right so, so here is the theorem so basically we essentially just proved this theorem so i mean i, I didn't call it a proof but it, it was a proof okay um and let's just go with a couple of examples okay so maybe before i go through examples so let me just quickly share with you why this is important so this is important in the so-called gradient descent method so let me show you a picture so if we want to find the minimum value of some function what we do and we don't know where the minimum value is so what we do is we start at some point and then we take small steps in the direction minus the gradient of the function and so every time we take uh, steps in the direction in which the function decreases most rapidly so naturally you know eventually we will come to to a, to a point of minimum and that's the core of the so-called gradient descent method and this is how modern artificial intelligence systems are trained so something like image recognition systems or something like natural language processing so essentially uh so they are trained by the, the this gradient descent method anyway so let, let's um work out some simple example first and so uh, in this case we're given a function x times e to the y and we need to find the rate of change of f at the given point in the direction from p to another point right? so the first thing is probably we need to figure out uh what the vector u is right so we have the point p is two zero and we have the the point q well let me just write 0 0.5 two and the, the question is to find the rate of change of f in the direction from p to q right so it means that we should take the vector from p to q and the vector from p to q can be found if we subtract coordinates of q well, of p from coordinates of q right so we are going to subtract say the first 0 0.5 minus 2 which is 1 minus 1.5 and 2 minus 0 which is 2. okay so the, this is pq now u the vector in which we are taking um along which we are taking the directional derivative should be the unit vector so it should be pq divided by its norm so we need to find the norm of pq right so the norm of pq is the square root of the um so let me write it here so the norm of pq is square root of uh, the sum of squares of two coordinates so minus 1.5 squared plus 2 squared so which is square root of uh 1.5 squared is 2.25 plus uh 4 which is square root of uh, 6.25 this is 2.5 okay so the norm of pq is 2.5 right and our vector u is minus 1.5 over 2.5 and 2 over 2.5 um which is really in decimal is minus 0 0.6 and 0 0.8 so th this is my vector u okay so part a let me reiterate so in part a we we haven't uh answered part a yet but we did found that in part a the vector along which we are um finding the directional derivative is really minus 0 0.6 and 0 0.8 okay cool so let me continue um So let me write it again so in part a we have u is uh minus 0 0.6 and 0 0.8 all right so my f of x y is x times e to the y all right so my point initial point p is um 2.0 right yeah so my initial point p is 
So what I need to do, I need to find uh, nebula F evaluated at the point P, right? So nebula F generally is the uh, first, the first entry is the derivative of F with respect to X. So it is e to the Y. The second entry is the derivative of f with respect to the y, which is x e to the y. Now I need to find a specific value, so I need to plug it in, 2 and 0. So e to the 0 is 1, and uh, x is 2 times times 1. Right? So nebula f is 1.2. Okay, now the directional derivative of u of f in the direction of u at the point um, 2.0 is going to be the dot product of this and this. So it's going to be minus 0 0.6 times 1 plus 0 0.8 times 2. So which is, I think, minus 0 0.6 plus 1.6, which is just 1. Okay. So the answer to the first part of the question is just 1. Right. So here the answer is, is 1. This is the rate of change of f at the given point in the given direction. Yeah, so it, it is precisely the directional derivative. Okay, anyway, so here is the printed version. Uh, so nebula f is 1, 2, and here is the answer. Uh, this is the u that I just figured out, and okay. And that's the answer to part a. Okay, nice. Fine, now uh, let's... Um, to part B. So in part B, we're supposed to find the maximum rate of change and the direction in which the maximum uh, rate of change happens. All right. Um, so the maximum rate of change is just the norm of the gradient vector. So the norm of the gradient vector is the square root of the sum of squares of its coordinates. So f x squared plus f y squared. So which is, in our case, square root of 1 square 1 plus 2 square uh, 4 square root of 5. Okay, so that's it. So the maximum rate of change here is square root 5. So that's the answer to the first question in part B. So the maximum rate of change uh, of the function f in all possible directions is going to be square root 5. Uh, what is the direction in which the maximum rate of change is attained? That is the direction of the gradient vector. And the direction of the gradient vector is, is basically we take our gradient vector, which is 1.2, and then we normalize it. So we divide it by its own norm, and we just found its norm. It is square root 5. So we should just divide it by square root 5. And this is 1 over square root 5, 2 over square root 5. That's the direction in which uh, the maximum rate of change is attained. So if you prefer i and j, then it's it looks like 1 over square root 5 times i plus 2 over square root 5. I'm oh, sorry, square root 5 times j. Okay, so that's basically it. Um, so that's the uh, end of this question, and there is a conclusion. Uh, so what we saw here is that the, the gradient vector is orthogonal to uh, level curves, and it points um, at the direction where f increases most rapidly, right? And the opposite is where f decreases most rapidly um, and the, this direction is used in the gradient descent algorithm that I, I just explained well I mean I, I just gave you some ideas so the probably the most important application in today's world is training uh, deep learning models so all of them are trained by some version of gradient descent okay so that's the end of part 8 and that's the end of the lecture thank you for your attention